hello, welcome. Um, you know, I've been doing the reading in a year, and I don't know if you have been part of that. Our church has been doing that uh, since January, right? So a lot of things have been going on, and Scripture has been teaching me a lot of cool things. But it's funny, I'm going to do today's devotion, and here is what God showed me today in my own reading. And He would show you the same thing if you are reading through the Bible. I really challenge you to either keep up with it or get started doing that because there's some really cool things. But where this goes is in Luke chapter 6. Uh, Jesus is just calling his disciples. And so he's you know trying to encourage them and get them ready for whatever is getting ready to happen. And he literally just called them. And, and all these people are wanting to be healed. And they are coming to him right and left. They're even wanting to touch the hem of his garment just because they know that they will be healed. So all that's going on, and that's the context by which we read this verse. And we're going to read in Luke chapter 6, verses 22 through 23. And then we're going to jump down to verses 27 through 36. So I'm going to read them, and then I have just a few more things to say. But in light of what we're all experiencing, we're now in enclosed environments. And if you're like me, you're reading things that you see on Facebook or wherever. And some things make you angry, right? Some things you just feel like, I need to just go tell that person and start to type. And I know that's how I feel. I don't don't know where you're at. And sometimes I see it and and it's encouraging and I'm going back and forth. And then I'm thinking about what the future is like. But I don't want you to give up. And so this is why I think this is a really good verse um, section of scripture to read. So let me just start reading it. Verses 22 through 23 is where I'll start. It says, What blessings await you when people hate you and exclude you and mock you and curse you as evil because you follow the Son of Man? And the Son of Man here uh, in other parts of Scripture is um, also referring to Jesus, but it's also referring to the Messiah. So it's really clear what Jesus is saying. But he, he uses Jesus uses his self-title as the Son of Man. It says, When that happens, be happy. Yes, leap for joy, for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, their ancestors treated the ancient prophets that same way. And now I'm going to drop down. And I want you to keep this in mind because when we need to be keeping in mind who our enemy is. And as we see people and read and get angry sometimes, I mean, you just can't help it. Plus, you're you're experiencing things you've never experienced before. Most of us have never experienced even had to experience so I I understand the frustration but keep this in mind because here's what it says this is but to you who are willing to listen I say love your enemies do good to those who hate you bless those who curse you pray for those who hurt you if someone slaps you on on one cheek offer the other cheek also if someone demands your coat offer your your shirt also give to anyone who asks, and when things are taken away from you, don't try to get them back. Do to others as you would like them to do to you. The golden rule. And he continues. He says, if you love only those who love you, why should you get credit for that? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good only to those who do good to you, why should you get credit? Even sinners do that much. And if you lend money only to those who can repay you, why should you get credit? Even sinners will lend to other sinners for a full return. But here it is. He clenches it up right here. Love your enemies. Do good to them. Lend to them without expecting to be repaid. Then your reward from heaven will be very great. And you will truly be acting as children of the Most High God most high for he is kind to those who are unthankful and wicked you must be compassionate just as your father is compassionate wow love your enemies that's really hard to do and i have to admit there are people that just get under uh, my skin and people who make me angry and right now we're hearing about whether congress is doing something or not doing something or whether this group is doing this or not doing this and remember Jesus wants us to love our enemies. And if we love our enemies, what does that mean when we respond to people? Whether it's 
either online or maybe even to your family or your neighbor. There's going to be a lot of things we don't like and a lot of things we don't agree, but we want to represent Jesus well. And what does he tell us as believers? He tells us to love our enemies. So while our first reaction is to get upset and get angry and then to say things we probably will regret or write things that we might regret, keep in mind that Jesus tells us that we are to love our enemies and to do good to them. And so that's what I'm, I'm asking you to think about. Reread that scripture again. It was Luke chapter 6, verses 22 through 23. And then I jumped down to verses 27 to 36. It was in my reading today. God already had it prepared for me to share with you. And he's certainly making me think about it. And I'm trying to internalize what I should do and how I can be better at loving my enemies. Loving people that don't seem lovable to me. Wow. You know, one thing I do know, I don't know of other religions where they're told what Jesus tells his followers, and that is to love our enemies. He usually tells them to hate, but we want to demonstrate that in our words, in our deeds, in our actions. So get to it. That's new homework for you from me, and may God bless you as you uh, spend time with your family and as you think about what's really important.